It wasn't difficult. It was a dream come true for me. Playing for your country, playing with the people you admired all your life. I enjoyed the ride like anyone. I can say I played with passion and I believed in hard work. I enjoyed every bit of it, on and off the field. We terrorized everyone and that was fun as well. <laughs> When it comes to bowling, he knows when to bowl, where and, uh, and how. It was a package. How to bowl reverse, new ball, dry condition, cloudy condition, how to bowl in the death, in the middle, uh, test cricket, wonder cricket, pretty I haven't seen anyone performing that consistently in all conditions. He was fierce. He was competitive. His left arm can swing the ball both ways, cut the ball, bowls with good pace. In those days, Pakistan had the ace bowler in Wazi Makran. He was a legend. He was a naturally a match winner. Like any other youngster in India, in Pakistan, in subcontinent, you know, cricket is the ultimate sport. And I played cricket uh, on the streets, on my roof, in my garage, behind my house there was a little gully. I wanted to be a left arm spinner and an opener batsman. And uh, then I started playing uh, uh, with, with cricket ball. I remember when I finished school, I was about 15, and I started bowling with cricket ball and I started enjoying it. Wasim Akram's early career didn't have the ideal start, with the young fast bowler struggling to cement a place in his college team. I was there in the squad but never played because I think uh, the captain of my college team was a left arm medium pacer as well. So the year after I got picked up for Pakistan team, it's a very uh, uh, odd, funny story in a way. My coach Sadiq Khan said there's a camp going on in Lahore, it's called summer camp. There are about 150 kids are there. There were two test cricketers were there. We were having nights in Lahore, Pakistan team, and I was getting ready to bat and I was batting. And we had some net bowlers. Nobody knew who I was, so I never got to bowl. And after the fifth day, I went to my nets, to my Sadiq Khan, to my coach. I said, look, coach, I'm not going because I'll be standing there. I was standing there for like four days. I didn't do any bowling. He said, don't worry, I'll call the camp commander, Aga Sadat Ali again, another test cricketer. He said, you go there today and you'll get the ball. He was a net bowler. I saw this tall, very, very skinny guy. He was an old ball, like all net bowlers get the, the worst uh, cricket balls, uh, which is available. And he, he bowled this ball and the ball, I saw it pitch. And the next thing, it's gone past my nose. It just gave me enough time to just sway out of the way. And I, th I thought there was something wrong with the pitch. I went and patted the pitch. I thought, it just can't happen. This guy is just, this, Nothing to his frame and it's lightning quick. So I bowled very well, big in swingers. I was uh, bowling and didn't know what was happening. I was running in and bowling. And then there was a three day game in November 84. New Zealand were touring, and of course, the great Javed was captain. And my name was in the squad. So he jostled for his position and, and, and finished up putting Basim uh, in the three day game. And I got seven for 15 first innings. That was my first first class game. I don't know how, but I got seven for 15 first innings and two for 15 seconds. So altogether, I've got nine wickets in my first first class game. And then I got picked for New Zealand tour in January 85 and played my first test match there. I was very skinny tall, but very, very skinny. And John Wright is out. Well caught on the gully. Has his first test wicket. Skinny young lad, a bit like myself in my early days, uh, running in and uh, bustling in and you know, delivering the ball at pretty good pace. Uh, left arm, could swing it. And going to New Zealand for me was, was like dream come true, travelling uh, with the heroes you had, your, their posters in your room, Javed Miyadas poster was there, Imran Khan, Zaheer Abbas, Majid Khan, Asif Bal. Lively dynamic, quick arm action, difficult to pick up the ball, swung it, 
you know, genuinely swung it. I think I got injured. I had these pads. Those days, your pads were like, like a cloth. So I got hit by Richard Hadley. So obviously, I didn't tell anyone that I was in pain. He became an outstanding bowler in world cricket. I'm not surprised uh, that somebody of his talent has gone on to be recognised as uh, one of the best, uh, certainly, left arm bowlers in the history of the game. Then we, we went to Australia straight after. It was a mini World Cup. Our first game was against Australia, and I got five for 21. The first top five batsmen, Dean Jones, Kim Hughes, Robbie Kerr, uh, Kaplow Vessels, they were my victim in my first spell. So I, I started off well, and then I met my hero, the great Imran Khan. And he took me under his wings and learned. You know, early on, mentors are very important in any team sport. And I had the best mentors. I had Mudassar Nazar, very famous, uh, hard-working, cricketing brain. When I looked at him the, for the very first time, I realized this guy is destined to become one of the best ever. It was written. Then Javed Miyadad, one of the top players the world I've ever seen, street smart, and I've learned how to, how to work hard from Imran Khan, because nothing is easy in life. You've got to work hard every day, and that's why I learned from these three mentors, and they've helped me a lot along the way. I think Imran Khan transferred his soul into Wazim. Odasa Nazar used to take me out in the evenings to show me around the places, so I gained, I, I, I gained confidence from that, see? And I believe as a person, if you are confident, that shows what you do in life. Following the blistering start to his international career, English county cricket sides began to take an interest in the young fast bowler. I was signed by Lancashire in 1988. I remember I met Neil Fairbrother in Sharjah and Laurie Brown, then England team physio. They're both Lancashire physio and Lancashire players. They came up to me after the game. They said, would you like to play for Lancashire? The hierarchy at Lancashire had, uh, had said to myself and Laurie, um, there's a young Pakistani lad called Wazim Akram. We want, we want you to try and uh, have a word with him while you're out there uh, and see if he'd like to come and play some county cricket. And of course, it was real cloak and dagger stuff. Um, hiding behind palm trees, talking and one thing and another, trying to make sure nobody else saw us. And of course, you know, he was, he was open to the idea of having a look at how he could improve his own cricket as much as anything else at that point. I said, yeah, league, Lancashire league, I'm ready. Because those days, counties were unreal. It was ultimate to be a professional for counties. As a young player, he was exciting from the, from the word go. You know, you could see how much skill and enthusiasm he had for the game. He wanted to talk cricket, he wanted to play cricket, he wanted to practice, and he wanted to improve. And, you know, as a true great of the game, he never stopped improving. In 88, I played for Lancashire, and 89, I became one of the best bowlers in world cricket. That's how much Lancashire helped me. I can't say that being here made him a great player. He, I think he was always going to be a great player, but it was certainly, it certainly was a bit of a finishing school for him, playing in different conditions. He was really a special talent. I haven't seen anyone performing that consistently in all conditions. So he learned different skills. Um, but, you know, he was a bright man as well, and therefore he was like a sponge, he took it all in. He performed all over the places. And a lot of that must come from his time here. He learned how to bowl in all conditions. He could swing the ball with a new ball, he could swing the ball with the old ball, he could bowl fast, he could bowl cutters, he developed this fantastic slower ball. As a bowler, as a fast bowler, he had everything that was required to be great, and he was. Probably one of the great left armers the game has ever seen. And he was just a handy batsman to have coming in at number seven, say. He could whack it, biff it, um, take it, take a tiring attack on. But you wouldn't say that he was a top-class batsman. He was a really great bowler whose batting was a bit of a bonus. He liked tonking it. Uh, he didn't like blocking Wazzy Macram. He went out there to, to give it a tap. Liked having to do it the spinners. Suppose I enjoyed batting and, you know, uh, Imran always uh, said you never, you don't concentrate on your batting as much. But I wanted to be a bowler who could bat. I wanted to be a fast bowler. I didn't want to be an all-rounder and have a bit of this, bit of that. In 1990, Akram picked up 11 wickets against Australia in the first test in Melbourne. Close. He's got him, yes. What a bowler. What a beautiful bowler. Out. 
Yes, that's out. Well bowled. Beautiful piece of bowling. Close. Got him. Good bowling. Going around the wicket. Spread him up. Bowling him. What a yorker. Oh, what a performance. That's a joy to watch. As well as scoring his maiden test century in the following test at Adelaide. Up goes the hand of Wazinek. And he has chalked up his first century in test match cricket. But there was more to Akram than just sheer pace, and his peers knew it. He swings the ball more than anyone else. It's a lot to do with his action, a lot to do with his stride onto the crease. So I think that a lot of combination makes him, makes him a, such a good swing bowler. You know, the pace is there, the pace was always there. He bowls one, 145 clicks, I, I would say. And he swung it big, his wrist position was good, his, his you know, he, he used to swing it big. Wazim is you know, nearly the ultimate fast bowler. Um, he comes off a short run and just powers through the crease. His left arm can swing the ball both ways, cut the ball, bowls with good pace and just, you know, he's, I think skill-wise, I can't think a better bowler than Wazzy. What he could do with the ball was just amazing. A great bowler. I've always, always think that Wazzy Macram. I've seen him done things with a cricket ball that not too many people could do it. I've never seen a guy who's, who's that skillful, who actually enjoyed bowling with the old ball uh, more than the new ball. And he, I know that he will say that hands down, that he, when that bloke took the old ball and it was reverse swing, he was the best at it to execute that in any, on any surface in anywhere in the world. And new ball, old ball, he made a difference and made a massive impact. And I think that in terms of skill, he's the best I've ever seen. I mean, I'll be lying if I say I knew straight away what was swing was all about. I learned. Imran taught me everything. He used to work hard in the nets. You know, he used to keep, um, you know, bowling those uh, reverse balls, whether it was out swingers, in swingers, slower ones. I've seen him work on his yorkers as well. Swing is in the wrist. You flick the wrist and, and it's a sideways push. And the more you practice, my natural swing was to in swing to the right handers. And, you know, naturally. So then I said, okay, everybody's expecting. So in 92, I started learning with away swingers. So I used to shiny side this side. I used to open up my wrist and I used to flick like this. So sideways push. So if, it's, I'm, if I'm your right-handed batsman, I'm bowling at you, I'll go like this. So the ball will go away from you. I've seen so many, so many great players, you know. Uh, facing Wasim Akram, dancing and ducking. So... Uh, it was one of the best view, you can say. I was standing in the slip and was seen running in and bowled to these guys. So I was lucky enough not on receiving end. So yes, practice makes it perfect as long as you put your mind into it. It's not that difficult. It's, it's, it's a hard work, but again, in the end of the day, it's worth it. Akram's hard work paid off in 1992 as he cemented his place in Pakistani folklore at the World Cup. The World Cup campaign didn't start off very well. The first game we lost to Windies by 10 wickets. The second game uh, uh, we played against England, 70 all out. It rained off, got point each. Then we had to play uh, uh, Australia at Perth. And I remember uh, waking up in the morning. I was bowling quick, but I was bowling a lot of white balls and no balls. And I was worried. That was the time when Imran and the other senior players took over and just gave us the boost. and. Try to feel confident that we can, we can, we can win the tournament. I woke up in the morning, went to the breakfast, opened up the newspaper, front page news. I want, I want Vaseem to bowl fast. I don't want him to worry about his no ball and white balls. He was psychologically very much there, Imran. So I read that. I said, "Oh, my captain wants me to bowl fast. I will bowl fast." Khan's Pakistan beat Australia in the crucial group match, as well as New Zealand in the semi to set up a final against England. I remember the night before the game, we, we had our team meeting. They spoke about reverse swing and Wazim. And um, really, the only good thing I could say to the lads, well, I didn't want to fr frighten anybody. All I said was, when he comes back on, we've just got to make sure we play with a full face. Um, and the ball will, hopefully, if it doesn't hit the middle, will hit the edge and it'll either go down to third man or fine, fine leg. Final day, I'm telling you, we're all very relaxed. 
we all felt that this is our World Cup. Even before the game, the whole team felt that, no, this is what nobody can take away this World Cup from, from us. Imran was injured during the whole World Cup because he had a shoulder injury. I remember he used to get a couple of injections almost before every game, painkiller injection in his shoulders. But again, he was very confident, very adamant that we will win this World Cup. And when the morning came, I remember being clearly nervous um, and wandered out and Waz was on the outfield and he came over and we shook hands and it was ridiculous really, it was just like Lancashire were playing and it was a World Cup final uh, and he ended up throwing me a few balls and I knocked him into, into the net area. Uh, I, th I think the lads were thinking what's going on here. The final was seen as the perfect swan song for their great captain Imran Khan and he didn't let them down, moving up the batting order to help a struggling Inzamam Alhaq. So came at number three, got 70 odd, soft the new ball, we lost two wickets early on and then Javed Miyadad was also very phenomenal. And then I remember Waz coming in towards the end of the innings and he had some wonderful shots, powerful big shots that got them up to the score they got to even though there was a bit of a platform, it was him that catapulted them to actually to the score they ended up getting. I came, got 33 of 18 balls. So, uh, 249 was, uh, uh, we thought the game on. Pakistan had the ace bowler in Wazi Makra and came round the wicket, reverse swing the ball. That was a sort of new sort of skill in those days. And of course, under lights as well at the MCG, it's not easy to pick. A wonderful exponent of swing, being left arm, strong, pacey, difficult action to pick up. We knew it was a good wicket and we still thought we were in with a, a bloody good chance of, of knocking the runs off. And then he opened the bowl in and he got beefy out early on. So I got, went around the wicket, bowled him this ball outside edge. Beefy still thinks he didn't nick it. I think you, you did. <laughs> I was batting with Alan Lamb and we put on a decent partnership and we got right back into the game and he came back on. And it was about that time and I thought, you know, it's going to reverse here and he bowled a couple of balls and clearly it, it was reversing. One of the guys said, uh, you know, this ball is reversing a bit. And Imran said, I reckon you should come for two overs, we need a wicket because partnership was building up. I said, sure, I'm warmed up, skipper, I'm in. And uh, I remember Neil Fay, Neil Fay, brother, played with me for three years for Lancashire. He knew I will go around the wicket the reverse swing. At that point, he was as quick as anybody in the world. And when, he's, when he picked his knees up, you could see some spells he ambled in and other spells he charged in and his knees were, were up round his chest. And that spell, you watch him running in and his knees were, he was picking his knees up and charging in. He knew I will bowl this away swinger to the right-hander. The idea was to get the edge or maybe bowled. And he told uh, Alan Lamb, this will happen to you. You know, I mean, we were talking between balls about what was, what was happening. Um, and here's me telling Alan Lamb, who was probably England's, one of England's best ever one day players, trying to give him instruction. Um, and I thought we were doing all right until, uh, until that ball, really. Alan Lamb thought, OK, around left arm, around the wicket, going away from me, it's very unlikely. It's very rarely happened before in world cricket. So I bowled that delivery. He missed it completely, off stump gone. And I think uh, that was it. The ball to Alan Lamb was the perfect round the wicket, outswinging reverse ball. It was absolutely on the button, unplayable. Lammy was 20 odd, 30 odd not out, seeing it nicely, and he got nowhere near it. And at that point on that day, no batsman in the world would have would have hit that ball. Although I got the second wicket again, planned with Imran. He was at Midon. I said he'll be expecting the outswing. What should I do? He said, bowl length in swing. So I bowled the length in swing, inside edge onto its stumps, and the rest as the was history. Those two deliveries are the history's best, best balls. You see the angles, two of the most difficult angles for a batsman. If you are talking about the World Cup final, uh, the ultimate dream, first time Pakistan winning the World Cup, yes, those were the, those were the best deliveries I bowled.
Pakistan were now regarded as one of the best sides on the planet, not least because of their emerging strike bowling partnership, the two W's, Wasim and Wakar. I think we both were strikers. You know, we both wanted to do better than each other. And that competition really helped the team. If he's getting five wickets, how can I get five wickets from this end? Is he got six wickets now in this one day? I need to get out of the match in the next games. I'll get more wickets than him. I'll sort these out. This is my day. Spread Eagle, I used to call him. That was his action. He used to run in from 40 yards, sprint every delivery, 150 plus kilometers. I can promise you, 150 every ball. He used to terrorize that spin. After 92 World Cup, they came to England. Oh, my God. Mike Atherton opened the batting for England around that time. They were fantastic mates from the Lancashire days, and Waz was trying to kill him. They were the best pair of, of fast bowlers that I faced in terms of all-round ability. So the ability to run in and bowl fast with a new ball, the ability to swing the new ball, Akram swung it back, Waka Yunus swung it away. They got the old ball hooping round corners and then the ability to kind of bowl fast Yorkers that dipped in late. And they're a fantastic pair of bowlers. We always had that belief we, had, we, we have a seam and Wakar. They're always going to win a game for us. You can't ask anymore. They were so good, fast, intelligent. I enjoyed every bit of it, on and off the field. We were like, we were like uh, uh, sisters, not brothers, sisters. We were used to get upset with each other very quickly. Respect, yeah. But you could tell that between them, there was a bit of an edge. That must be great if you're captain, you know. These two are going hammer and tong at this lot that we're playing and also against each other. We hardly spoke much about it, but when we were on the field, we made sure that when I'm bowling, he's standing at mid-off, or when, uh, when he's bowling, I'm either mid-off or mid-on. So he's just got to keep passing on a little bit of information, you know, do this, do that, don't do that, you know, that sort of thing. And I think that really helped us. There was a little rhyme. The kiddies, they say, you know, head, shoulder, knees and toes, knees and toes. When Wazim Akram and Waka Yunus used to bowl, we say, OK, no, Mouth and nose, it's just the head and toes, head and toes, head and toes. Say, they, you know, yoker and bouncer. It was like we terrorized everyone, and that was fun as well. <laughs> In 2013, Wasim Akram became the only Pakistani player to be named in Wisdom's all time greatest team, cementing his place as one of the greats of the game. Sometimes it feels unreal, sometimes it feels I'm dreaming. Imagine. I never thought when I was in class 10, studying at my school, playing on the streets of Lahore, getting into the wisdom's all-time great. Any difficult situation, if the team is not doing really well, he used to stand in the dressing room and say, OK, let's go, this is my session. I want you all to support me. This is my session. I will get you, I'll, I'll get you two wickets. I'll get, I'll get you breakthrough here. The old line of, if somebody could empty a bar, when he either came onto bowl or went out to bat, that fitted was to a T. I always rate him as the greatest ever cricketer produced by Pakistan. And uh, I've heard from most of the legends of the game that if they become a second life in cricket, then they want to become Vazi Makram. In swing, Yorker, new ball, normal swing, out swing, pace, bounce, tall, quick arm action, everything, everything. He was packaged, you know. 104 test matches. 414 wickets, 356 one-day internationals, and 502 wickets. All testaments to the unique talent of Wasim Akram. But his career was about more than just natural ability. How do I describe myself as a player? It's a very difficult question, but I can say I played with passion and I believed in hard work. And I can promise you, doesn't matter what you do in life, if you work hard, you will succeed. <laughs>